Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part one of building Bender, the real walking, talking robot. So we're going to build Bender on the Robot X series and you can follow that in my channel. It's a slightly different series about the mechanics and electronics and coding to getting this walking robot working. And I've got quite away with it and unfortunately in the last Robot X video uh, one of the motors broke and I'm now replacing all of the leg actuators with something a bit more serious, not drill motors with uh, lead screws in the chucks. So in the meantime, we're going to build Bender's body, cosmetics, animatronics, and hopefully we can come back to Robot X in a couple of weeks when I've got the new actuators, and we can get the whole thing up and running. So last time we built this frame, and we started 3D printing the head, and we've still got the top of the head to do, and today we're going to focus on those head details. I've got a load of foam here to skin the body up, which is going to come on later, but I just wanted to point out it won't be a cutaway droid. It will have cosmetic skins, it'll all be covered in, sealed and painted, and everything will match. So we're going to be concentrating on Bender's head in this episode, so um, I'm going to work out the eye animatronics first. So we need to print this eye surround, uh, which is one solid piece. I've got two holes in the back and I need to look at the eye placement. But um, essentially inside we've got some animatronic eyes which will made in, be made in two sections. The bottom part probably being yellow or being clear and being illuminated with a yellow LED inside. I haven't decided which yet. The top of course is black so that we get uh, the ability for him to move his eyes around and sort of blink or um, do different eye expressions and that's going to work by rotating those eyes along the central axis so he can basically tip these eyebrows in or out as it were um, and also these are going to tilt on this axis so the eyes will be able to tip forwards and backwards um, so although he won't be able to look directly left and right it will give him a range of different eye expressions so I need to get these parts printed and put together and um, obviously we've got pivot points out the back so we'll have a servo sitting on that green part pulling the eye on this pivot at the top so that it can move um, sort of forwards and backwards and then they'll both rotate through these holes and we'll have some servos inside Bender's head doing that. Here's one of my eyeballs printing in yellow ABS and it's 64% uh, of the way through, just got the top to do, which will of course uh, there's an open side on it which is going to be one of the black ABS parts. Here's one of those black ABS top parts, obviously it's much more shallow and a much smaller print. Meanwhile the top of Bender's head is printing, uh, this is on the Moore Struder on the Lulzbot Taz, the same as last time, which is a 1.2mm nozzle, so it's fairly crude. All of it's going to get sanded down and filled anyway. You can see a few bits have fallen down inside unfortunately, but um, there's no support material, so we'll see what happens when it comes to the top. It's about 83% of the way through, so we'll see very shortly whether it succeeds. Well, there we go. It seems to be pretty clean on the outside anyway, and it's just bridged over the hole completely. So here's the top of the head. It's extremely tough, despite being um, a single wall essentially, with 20% infill, so there are two walls in fact going all the way around. The inside's a bit messy, but no one's ever going to see that, and all of this is going to be sanded and filled. So I've glued some of these together with normal super glue, they're all PLA prints, but they've uh, come together pretty well, so uh, we'll leave those apart for now. We've got a bit of a bit of the mouth mechanism already made in there, we'll come on to shortly, but for now it's looking pretty good. So there's the top of the head. We may re uh, leave that removable so I can access the back of the eyes and what's going on in the mouth, we'll see. But um, essentially it's all going to be stuck together and sanded and painted and made nice and smooth. And I've also printed this gigantic piece which is Bender's eyes. And that slots almost perfectly just in there. So uh, pretty happy with the way that looks so far. So here are some of the eye pieces. We've got these with their gimbal that fits inside there and I can get those in and out pretty easily. Obviously we've got the uh, black part that goes on the top there to give Bender a bit of an eyelid and that's got the pivot point in so we've got a servo that will fit on here and that will pivot on the pivot point on the black part to uh, tip that eye around. Meanwhile these rotate as I say and they'll have a piece of studding in the back that's going to go out to a hub on the back of the eye assembly and that is going to be plugged onto a servo that turns them so they can both rotate. So I'm going to try and get some of this assembled and we can see how it looks with his eyes in. Right, so I've just temporarily mounted those with no servos. Obviously they can turn so he can do uh, various sort of more evil looks and also he can look up and down a little bit as well. So 
I think that's okay. Obviously, there's some uh, degrees of freedom missing in typical animatronic eyes, but uh, I think we've got enough there to give him a kind of a kind of look. We probably don't even need to move those too much. And if they move while you're looking at it, then obviously that's going to give him quite a lot of expression while he says various phrases. And the inside of this is eventually going to be painted with matte black, and I'll probably just paint over the shiny plastic as well, so the whole thing is black and all you see is the yellow eyes, then I don't think they even need illuminating. Here are the servos at the back of the eyes here. These are just taped on, because of course I need to take them off and sand all this down and paint it, so I've just used some sticky tape to attach them, but obviously these will uh, rotate, and those rotate the eyeballs. So if we just spin that round, you can see we've got that rotation there. And the eyeballs, of course, move forwards and backwards, and the other servos are fitted in the back. Let's have a look at the mouth for Bender. So we're going to have a piece of acetate on here with his teeth drawn, the vertical lines. And then he's got wavy lines that uh, move inside to do different mouth expressions. So what we're actually going to do is put this carousel in, which has got a servo on it. And that's going to mount like this. That's going to mount like that. And then this is going to rotate around. And this is going to have an illuminated thing on the inside with um, a sort of yellow sheet or whatever with the mouth expression. So this can do just over a 180, and that means his mouth can uh, form different expressions. And we should find if we plug in this, that servo fits neatly between his eye mechanism just here. But we are going to have a bridge to the back and some other stuff scooping down to hold the illumination. Right, this is fixed to the mouth and the inside turns against it. I just wanted to point out that even though this isn't a 360 servo, it only just does about 190 degrees. In fact, we get most of the 360 for the inner carousel showing through the window. So I've put two marks here. This one's currently aligned with the edge of the window this side. If I rotate this all the way around, we can see that in fact the uh, other mark is shown at this side. So this window is quite wide, which means we get this whole lot shown through the window at some point, which is almost a 360, so we need a complete wraparound for the inner mouth. Right, so I've got acetate again on here, which is completely clear, and then I've got uh, yellow lighting gel, which is actually for putting in front of lights and so on, you know, for clubs and discos, so, um, or stage shows. It's completely clear though, so we're gonna need another layer of diffuser so we don't just see straight inside. So to make the light diffuse from the inside, we're going to use normal white paper. There we go, so some of that inside. And that should work pretty well. I've drawn the mouth patterns on the paper so that I can sandwich the paper in between the acetate and the lighting gel, and I can just swap the paper if I ever want to change the mouth expressions. Well, I may have to change the pattern, but essentially it works, and it can rotate and rotate back again so we can get different aspects of it. There's probably too much straight and not enough wiggly lines, but um, obviously I can just change the bits of paper out. Right, this is pattern number two, so we've got no straight lines now, just a wiggly line all the way through and a big grin in the middle. So I think that'll probably do, although I might change it again. I'm pretty sure that looks like Bender, but we need to illuminate the mouth and do some electronics and animatronics for the eyes. Here's my electronics board, which has a load of really bright LEDs at the front to illuminate the mouth. On top, there's an Arduino Pro Mini and a five volt power supply and lots of wires and connectors here to connect all the servos. The power wires run down the outside of the head here and they run outside the carousel, which of course rotates in there. So there's my mouth mechanism rotating. Unfortunately, my papers, one of the bits is slightly darker, it's a bit thicker, so um, I'm probably gonna change that out for one continuous strip anyway and redraw the mouth pattern. But for now, that will do for a proof of concept. All right, there we go, that's everything running together. So it's just running round in a loop, round and around and around, animating the eyes and the mouth and so on. So not too unhappy with that as a proof of concept. Obviously, what we will do is sync up the um, all of these facial features with sounds. So every time a sound plays, his mouth moves, his eyes form a different facial expression, depending on whether he's saying something evil or something friendly. But uh, pretty happy that with the overall look of that. And I'll change that piece of paper with some better teeth on it and without a dark patch. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. Right, so it's definitely Bender. Next time, we're going to be skinning up the body and doing some animatronic arms. I'm not quite sure how they're going to work, but they're definitely going to do something. And then we'll have, hopefully, a third episode, which will be the cosmetic finishing, painting sounds, and making, probably, fabric tubes for his legs. And hopefully, at some point, the Robot X series will catch up 
and we'll have those actuators working so we can tie them both up at the end and we'll have a walking talking bender from Futurama. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects and also check out my Patreon campaign which is how most of these projects are funded. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Also have a t-shirt store, check out those links in the description to this video.